It's kind of strange to have your magic character just hit things with their staff. How about we have them use a spell as their basic attack instead? You can change the basic attack of a character to any skill you choose. Go to the Actors or Classes page, go to Traits, and add a new trait. Click the Attack tab and choose Attack Skill at the bottom. Here you can select any skill to change the character's basic attack to. For this example, let's change our Mage's basic attack to a Fire skill. Now, as you can see in the battle, the attack command still says attack, but the character will perform the fire spell and the damage formula as well as MP cost associated with it. Today, we're going to make a desperation move that transfers all characters MP to their HP. This will be an easy one. Create your move, call it whatever you want. Change scope to the user and set whatever cost you'd like. I wouldn't advise using MP because you'll lose a bit of MP for casting it and won't get that for your HP. Under the damage category, set your type as HP recover and for the formula, simply set it to A.MP. Make sure there's no variance or critical hit chance. Finally, under effects, add recover MP and change it to negative 100%. There we have it. When you use this skill, your HP recovers by the amount of MP that you currently have, and then you lose all of that MP. Random event location in 60 seconds. Let's go. On your map, go to the region editor. Place a one region tile for everywhere you want the event to be able to spawn. Create your event. Create a label at the top called roll for location. Now create two variables, event location X and event location Y. Have them choose a random number for the dimensions of your map. If your map is 20 by 16, then make X choose a number between 0 and 20 and Y between 0 and 16. Then create a get location info event for the coordinates we just created. Change info type to region ID and store it in a variable called region ID. Next, add a conditional branch that checks if region ID equals 1. Make sure you add an else branch. In your conditional branch, set event location to the X and Y coordinate variables. Under else, add a jump to label and jump to roll for location. Now when you interact with this event, it will jump to a random location. This may not be the most optimal spawn system, but this knowledge opens the door to a lot of other systems. Here's a beginner tip you might not know about. Not only can you change an event's movement speed, but you can also change your player's movement speed as well. Simply use the set movement route event command and choose the player as the target. Then click speed and choose the new speed you want the player to move at. 4 is the default speed. This could be useful for a key item or a state that allows the player to move more quickly or even more slowly, like they've become ensnared in a trap or ran through some sort of slime. This change will also affect your sprint speed and will not revert to normal on its own. You'll have to use this command again to set it back to default. I want to give a quick shout out to Ace Sprite, which is a third party tool that I find almost essential for RPG Maker devs. Ace Sprite is a graphical editor specifically designed to be used for pixel art. It's very easy to use for both beginners and experts, and there are a ton of tutorials on how to do just about anything you would want to do for graphic assets in your RPG Maker game. I use Ace Sprite along with many other RM devs I know, and I couldn't imagine creating custom art without it. Ace Sprite is also currently on sale for half off at $9.99, but even at full price, this program is a steal for the sheer amount of functionality and ease of use you get from it. Erase event is one of my favorite event commands and will save you from some major headaches and reduce switch bloat if you learn how to use it. This command will essentially delete the event until you leave the current map. Then when you come back, the event will be there again as if nothing happened. This is especially useful for moving NPCs around due to story progression as RPG Maker is not great at remembering event locations after they've moved. In this example, we have a character here that will tell us how many times we've visited a room. In our event, we've moved this character to a different location and added one to the variable. As you can see, even though it's an auto start event, the event stops once it hits erase and restarts when we re-enter the room. No self switch needed. Knowing when to use this will save you a ton of time and wasted switches. I recently talked about erase event and how useful it was, but I wanted to give a better example noted by at Monkeem in the comments regarding visual encounters. As you can see on our map here, there are a few monsters wandering around. Each event contains battle processing and then erase event. Let's see what that looks like. I've lowered the enemy's health here to one to make it a bit faster. 
once we win, as you can see, the monster event has disappeared. Since we used a race event, however, it will reappear once you leave the map, which is exactly what we would want from a visual encounter system for enemies, as well as auto star and parallel events for certain maps. This can save you from having to use so many switches or self switches. Hopefully this clears up a bit of confusion on when to use this command. This one is for the newer RM devs out there. Self switches and switches in general are super useful, but just because you use a self switch doesn't mean you need a new page to utilize it. For instance, let's have our NPC here say two different things that alternate each time you speak to him. You might think you need to put the first text on page one and the second text on page two with the self switch active. However, you can use one conditional branch on a single page to do this. Make a conditional branch that checks if self switch A is off. If it is, have it show the first text and then turn self switch A on. Under else, have it show the second text, then turn self switch A off. Now when you speak to the NPC, the dialogue will alternate and you didn't have to create an unnecessary extra page to make it work. I am on team, let me save whenever I want. But save points do have their use cases, so let's make one. The first step is arguably the most important one. You need an auto run event that runs at the very beginning of your game that disables save access. If you don't, then the player will be able to save anywhere. Now let's make a common event since we're going to be using this a lot. I like it when save points completely restore your party, so we're going to add a recover all command. You can then add a sound effect or show text that lets the player know they've recovered health. Then add the open save screen event command. Now you can make your save point event anywhere you'd like, set your trigger, I like player touch for this event, and have it call your save point common event. Just like that, you now have a save point. One of the questions I see a lot is which RPG maker is the best one? Personally, I think you should use whichever maker you enjoy the most. Each one has its pros and cons from a feature standpoint, but honestly, none of that matters if you don't like the experience. I'm actually using VX Ace right now for an idle game, and while I do miss a lot of the quality of life features that MZ has, I'm currently in the process of learning Ruby, which VX Ace uses as its scripting language. For me as a newer programmer, Ruby feels like a really easy language to learn, and I've already been able to do so much with the knowledge I've gained. I also just really like VXACE's RTP. Not everyone feels that way though. Some people prefer JavaScript for their programming language of choice, and MV or MZ's more cartoonish art style. If you're using a maker that has a feature you heavily dislike or miss a feature from another version, you're much less likely to continue your project or even use the engine at all. 